I fell in love with it the moment I saw it. I think Bell Mead is probably the most unique place, certainly in this county, and I would go so far as to say in much of the country. This was like my very first place that I could call home of my own. This was like my home. The history behind this place, the students who've been through here, the sisters who were part of it, and the priests. This place provided history, training, love, and nurturing to many peoples around the United States of America. It was first and foremost a beautiful home and Mother Catherine Drexel and the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament spared no expense in making certain that we had a first-rate education and that we were surrounded by beauty, not only in terms of the property, the actual natural property provided by Mother Nature, but also the building, the classroom, and the dining room, all of the facilities. They were absolutely gorgeous. And architecturally, it's a very significant property to the state of Virginia and the nation, being designed by Alexander Jackson Davis from New York. This was his first major uh, project in Virginia. This property was used by Philip St. George Cock. He was an unusual man, very uh, progressive farmer. He had slaves and uh, many of the people who live in this area right today can trace their ancestry to about 1838 when they came here as slaves of Philip St. George Cox. My family came from Surrey County with Philip St. George Cox and my great-grandfather James Morris. He was a carpenter and the miller at Belmead. Catherine Drexel is our foundress she founded St. Francis de Sales School for the Girls, but her sister, Louise, and her husband, Edward Morrell, they started this school for the boys, and they started this while Catherine was still in the novitiate, getting ready to become a sister. The unique thing about it, St. Catherine Drexel, who came from a wealthy family, she didn't use her wealth for herself. She used it to do what she could for the underprivileged the sacrifices that she made during a time when there was no such thing as a civil rights movement. But she had did it on her, on her own, using her fortune to open schools all over the country. Buildings were beautifully done. The barn was gorgeous. You know, we, and they had stable for the uh, horses. They, uh, they had different shops for the boys to learn. They had their own water system, they had their own electricity. When that came in, they could fix cars. The people in the neighborhood told us that everybody in the neighborhood would bring their things to be repaired here because it was, you know, they could get their services. And, uh, but anyway, then it became a military academy and it went much more into academics. It was, just, it was a culture shock to me. It's something that I never experienced in my life. Uh, I felt locked up. I felt, uh, violated by my parents. Uh, <laughs> I felt that they didn't want me, that they wanted to abandon me to get me out of the way. Uh, so I, I, I was sad for the first month or two. I think I was a little sad. And after that, I don't know, I got with the program. We want the children to become independent persons, taking leadership of their families, their communities, uh, the nation, <laughs> etc. I had never had any um, contact with nuns. This was my first experience and it looked like what I thought a boarding school would look like, the beautiful parlor. The next day one of the nuns asked me who did I give my money to, the money my mother had given me to pay them and I said um, the nun with the glasses on and she started to laugh and I didn't know why she was laughing then she told me she said all of them wear glasses. <laughs> The past story out here is an important story. The past story lives, but it's not the most important story for us at the present time. The past informs the present. The present creates the future. So we're here not for the past. We're here for the future, the present, on until the seventh generation. For the last 25 years, the National Trust for Historic Preservation has published an annual list which highlights, which puts the spotlight on 
the most endangered historic places in America. Last year in 2011, we listed Belmede. At present, we're focusing on Belmede Mansion, the former headquarters for St. Emma Military Academy, and we're focusing on redoing the roof of the mansion. I was here in May of 2010 and documented the, the state of the roof back then and gave a, a cursory roof assessment. What has happened now is that I can go back to those photographs as a reference to see what changes have occurred since that earthquake occurred, uh, which was last year. Internally in the building, there was some leaking going on at uh, the far corner on this end. And as we traced it, we see that maybe at that corner there has been some movement. Now that we're on the roof, we see there was significant damage. The uh, face of the, uh, the tower that we're standing on, the stucco has uh, broken. This, this tower is kind of like a cantilever that would have moved with the earthquake and in so doing made a breach. Um, in fact, the parapet has apparently shifted and the only thing that stopped it from moving more is the fact that this, we call it the A-frame, the, the ridge of this other part of the roof was there to brace it. To re um, preserve the historic essence of the building, it doesn't have to be totally disassembled, but where the wall has been compromised, everything from the roof line down to those areas have to be removed and reset because with mortar, once it separates, it has to be relayed. And but this is a, it is a salvageable um, situation. It's just going to be a little labor intense, and we have some areas that are, that are kind of difficult to reach. The scaffolding system is going to be have to be modified from the ground up to be able to actually access these points. We need to seal the building. We need to make certain that the roof is repaired. We have some of the most extraordinary windows that you've ever seen. The windows need to be repaired. Uh, if we can get the roof and the windows repaired within the next two years, I think that that will provide us with the kind of facility that we need because this facility will be the facility where we have our linchpin activities, where we have the Thomas Berry Center for Education, which will focus on environmental issues. We see that as fundamentally important to people throughout the world. This mission to make sure that Bell Mead is restored and that this property can continue to be a place of education and learning as it has been you know, since the 1800s is an important mission. What the board is looking to do now with the properties, it's kind of a, a multi-prong approach. We are very aware of the need to preserve the property, to sustain what we've got, to make sure that the buildings won't be falling down. So we're very conscious of that. And to do that, we are working with not only numerous consultants, advisors, and volunteers, but we're also in the middle of a, a very strong fundraising campaign to bring in the needed capital so we can keep the roof off over the mansion and keep the buildings in a, a way we can use them to make them sustainable for our mission. The historic buildings are in trouble and a resolution is urgently needed. So we, we have to find the funding to get the roof fixed and we're hoping that when people come out to see this beautiful place they will agree that it has to be saved from both a historical point of view but also looking forward for future generations. Where else does such a thing happen? Where else is the history of America encapsulated from love of the land, from the agricultural, from slavery, the Civil War, the hard times that farmers fall upon periodically in the latter part of the 19th century where people are actually hard scrabbling trying to survive? Where else? do we encapsulate America? And then we turn to a time when, when, when there was an, an effort and an opportunity to invite our African American population to participate fully in the educational process. Where else in America does that kind of thing happen? Where else can you go and actually see it? It's still alive, it's still here. All of those things come into fruition here. And now it's time for us, as a community of America, of Virginia, of Powhatan, to pony up to try to protect it, to try to use it, to try to develop it in a responsible way. Where else in America do we have this kind of opportunity? It's imperative for our nation's story. Too few people 
understand the need that St. Francis and St. Emma were filling. If we lose those buildings, if we lose St. Francis, if we lose the manor house, if the 2,000 acres, which has been so carefully stewarded by the sisters, if those 2,000 acres are lost, then we lose part of our cultural heritage. When we talk about the land, we talk about it in three different areas. It's the time of enslavement. Then we had 30 years later, a time of empowerment. And now it is the time of environment, where we feel it is a time where we hope to maintain a place in which the interrelatedness of all living beings is reverenced and respected. We need the buildings as a place to gather community, to honor and respect our past, while writing and telling our own new story for this site. We do have a past here at St. Francis St. Emma, but what's critically important to us now is the present and the future. We need to believe that in this glorious land here at St. Francis and St. Emma, filled with grandeur and beauty, that God surrounds us in everything we do. Come and learn to sing a new song of the land. Come and sing a new song with us. Come and meet. Come and enjoy. Come and support us.